Well, hi there. I'm here today with a crested gecko and a leopard gecko, and you might already recognize these two lizards from our video, actually our very first video, the top five reptiles for beginners. Both of these lizards were on that list, and they both honestly couldn't deserve it more. They belong on that list, but as half of the lizards on that list, because we kind of snuck six on there, half of the lizards on that list were all small geckos. And that has begged the question, which one is the best pet reptile? We've been asked this a whole lot of times. There have been a whole lot of comments about people who want to know what is the better pet reptile, the leopard gecko or the crested gecko? And they've been asking us to do a head-to-head. -head. And because we listen, and we always will listen, here we are. So today we're going to put the leopard gecko and the crested gecko head-to-head. -head. Our champion will be crowned based on our three head-to-head -head categories, which are awesomeness, because you wouldn't want to own it if it wasn't stinking awesome, expensiveness, and difficulty. So let's start with awesomeness. These two similarly sized geckos are both two of my very favorite pet reptiles. Uh, that's why I have both leopard geckos and crested geckos. But the reasons that I love them are actually fairly different. I'll first talk about a few of the things I love about them. I love the look of both of these lizards. They're very different looking actually, despite the fact that they're both geckos. Crested geckos look like tiny dragons. I especially love them when they've got a big, wide, almost arrowhead shaped head. They've got these cool crests and spines that run all down the body. Big eyelashes, some people call them eyelash geckos or eyelash crested geckos. And they've got essentially scale eyelashes, which are so cool. They're, they're a really stout gecko. They've got these big toe pads for climbing up in the leaves, and they've even got a toe pad on the end of their tail, which is semi-prehensile, which means they can kind of grab things with it. An incredible looking gecko. Leopard geckos come from a completely different habitat, and as a result, they look completely different. Leopard geckos do not have the big boofy head, but they do have very powerful jaws, so they've got kind of a, a lot of muscle back there. They've got eyelids. They're part of a group of geckos called eyelid geckos. Most geckos eyelids are fused closed and they can only clean them by licking their eye but the eyelid geckos can blink and that's pretty rad they don't have the toe pads because they live in the desert and some people will complain because that doesn't mean that they live like on sand dunes deserts are just areas that get low amounts of moisture each year and to survive in areas with low amounts of moisture they've got this big fat tail which actually works just like the humps of a camel a lot of people will tell you that a camel's humps have water in them, but that's not true. What they've got in there is fat, because when you metabolize fat, it makes water, so you get both energy and water out of a fat storage, and that's exactly what they've got going on in this big pudgy tail of theirs. That tail honestly took me some time, but eventually it really grew on me. At first, that was the thing I liked the least about leopard geckos, but I now love it. Both of these geckos are really awesome to breed but for kind of different reasons. Leopard geckos have been very, very popular in the pet trade for a long time. And so more leopard geckos are actually very, very affordable. It's actually very difficult to find a true wild type leopard gecko. They're usually gonna be a, some sort of a mutt of a whole bunch of different morphs. This is about as normal as you'll see, but when you see a wild type leopard gecko, they've got so many spots they're almost black. And you almost never see that. I actually really love the wild type leopard geckos. But they've got a lot of really cool single gene morphs and at affordable prices, that's fun to breed. Crested geckos, on the other hand, have very, very few single gene morphs, um, only two that I know of. But the thing about crested geckos is that no two are exactly alike. And when you hatch crested gecko eggs, Knowing what the parents look like only gives you some slight idea what the babies might look like. It's kind of like opening up a pack of Pokemon cards, or for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about there, like opening up a box of chocolates, because you never know what you're going to get. And that is a really fun thing about breeding crested geckos. Of course, you don't have to breed an animal just because you have it. It's something I enjoy, so it's something I wanted to mention. Crested geckos do drop their tails uh, more readily than leopard geckos. I've never had it happen while handling, but I do know that happens sometimes. 
Uh, when it's happened for me has been when transporting them. So I, I now transport them in a relatively small container in the dark. I've had good success with that, but I'm always nervous. Leopard geckos, I'm much less nervous. That tail is so important to them. In the wild, you'll be hard pressed to find an adult crested gecko with a tail. But leopard geckos need that fat storage, and so they're very reluctant to drop their tail. And if they do, unlike crested geckos, they at least grow it back, and that's awesome. Leopard geckos are less jumpy than crested geckos. They, they tend to just walk. They live on the ground in the wild, so they don't tend to jump, though they can. Crested geckos tend to jump to get where they're going, which some people don't like, but I actually find crested geckos a little bit easier to handle than a leopard gecko because they hold on to you. And a leopard gecko, you kind of have the job of staying underneath it, which is why the leopard gecko's on the table and the crested gecko's in my hands. Crested geckos need few, if any, live feeders. As juveniles, usually they'll take some feeders. As adults, they might take it as a treat every now and then, but mostly what they're gonna be eating is crested gecko diet, which is a powder that you add water to, and that is fantastic because it means you don't need to make special trips to the pet store very often for your crested gecko. Different story for a leopard gecko. Leopard gecko is gonna need to eat insect feeders every week, probably a few times a week, but it doesn't need a whole lot of them, so it's not gonna cost you a lot, it's just a little bit of a hassle. Quite frankly, both of these geckos are so stinking awesome, I just can't even express it to you. You can't go wrong with either of these if an awesome pet gecko is what you want. These are both just killer. When it comes to expensiveness, both of these are very, very reasonably priced lizards. The lizards themselves are inexpensive. A really high-end crested gecko is going to cost more probably than a high-end leopard gecko, but you can spend a lot of money on either of them if you really want to. Generally speaking, however, crested geckos and leopard geckos are both pretty darn affordable. The enclosures are going to be very different from one another, but neither of them are particularly expensive. Leopard geckos are going to need horizontal space. Crested geckos are going to need vertical space. Leopard geckos are going to need a warm spot. Crested geckos, as long as you keep your house at a, at a reasonably warm temperature but not too hot, where most humans want their house, crested geckos are probably going to be fine. If you let your house get very cold in the winter, you're going to need a warm spot. But generally speaking, you don't need an additional heat source for a crested gecko, and that's awesome. Crested gecko diet is pretty inexpensive. Uh, feeders for a leopard gecko are also inexpensive. The biggest difference is just going to be that you're going to have to drive to the store, probably, to get feeders, and that costs something. Otherwise, you can order them online, but you'll need pretty small quantities for a leopard gecko. And so, honestly, if you've got a quality local pet shop, that might be your best bet for feeding your leopard gecko, and that means you've got to get there, and that might cost you some money. Crested gecko diet, you just buy a big bag of that, it'll be good for like six months, it's awesome. This round, pretty much a draw. These are both very, very reasonably priced geckos to buy and to keep. They're awesome. When it comes to difficulty, well, frankly, I mean, if we're going to have a winner in this, it's been a draw to this point. If we're going to have a winner, it's got to come down to difficulty, and the good news is this will decide this whole head-to-head. -head. Both of these lizards are completely appropriate for a new keeper who does their homework. That's why they're on our list of best lizards for beginners. Crested geckos should be misted probably twice daily, once in the morning, once in the evening, and fed at least every other day. And that means that if you go on vacation or something, you are going to need somebody to stop by your house fairly regularly to mist your gecko and to feed them. Leopard geckos will drink from a water bowl, so you can fill that up. And they've also got this awesome fat tail. So they can go a while without really you having to look at them. That doesn't mean you should do this on a regular basis, but if you go on vacation, they can handle it. They can also go several days without eating, which is awesome. This means that leopard geckos are just less of a lifestyle than crested geckos are. Crested geckos, you've got to be dealing with them every day. Leopard geckos, not as much. If you live in a place where feeder insects are difficult to find, then a crested gecko is definitely going to be the easier option. However, I think most people can get feeder insects on the scale that a leopard gecko will need, and assuming that that is the case, the leopard gecko wins this round, and as a result, this head-to-head. -head. I don't think I could be much more enthusiastic about either of these geckos, to be perfectly honest. If you do your homework, you can't make a bad choice. These are both just out of this world fantastic. We have already full videos on both leopard geckos and on crested geckos. So if you haven't seen those already, you should check them out. If you've seen them already, you should check them out again. We also have an ever-growing library of just 
amazing pet reptiles that you should know about, so you should check that out right now. And as always, like and subscribe. Make sure to click the little bell so you get notifications whenever another stinking rad reptile comes out. We hope to see you real soon. Sound check. <laughs> One, two. Well, hi there. Let me just start over. Well, hi there. Well, I'm here to... You're a good gecko. Man, we're gonna be bloopers low on this one, except yeah, yeah. for... Good thing I couldn't start well. <laughs>